Are You Crazy Because I Know I Am, and this is Card Fight Crazy. And the next journey through a deck in this end of G era celebration deck profile bonanza is a deck that I'm actually really looking forward to using in premium. And that is my Maelstrom deck. Hmm. Maelstrom with announced that Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom will be, of course, returning. Uh, not too, not too surprising, honestly. Will be returning as the main feature of the clan. He will be the VR in the second extra booster. Yes, the second extra booster. Aquaforce will be getting a trial deck and, and be a part of that second extra booster. Maelstrom will be the main guy in that. I'm super happy to think about ways in which this deck will work with Excel and how it will how it will change, honestly, and what cards will need to be moved around, and of course, I'll be happy to throw in many of those triggers that come out, because they're not that important. But it's time to actually talk about this thing. First off, the main grade 3, this is the guy you always want to be sitting on, Blue Storm Supreme Dragon Lordly Maelstrom. His skill, Counterblast 1, when your G unit with Maelstrom and its card name, Stride, you may pay the cost you do, choose a card from your drop zone, put it into your soul, choose up to one card with Blue Storm and its card name from your hand, call it to rear guard until end of turn, the card you called gets once per turn at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you stand it. And his GB2, Counterblast 1, at the end of your turn, if you attacked four or more times with turn, you may pay the cost you do, draw a card, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards, and retires it. That GB2 is activated at the end of the turn, so you destride, then his GB2 gets to activate Counterblast 1, draw a card, your opponent chooses something to retire. These are where some contention could come in. Honestly, I legitimately 100% think that running the Break Ride in the Lordly Maelstrom deck makes absolutely no sense. Unless you failed on Megiddo, there is no point. Except that when you first ride it, if it's the third attack and it hits, you can get a Maelstrom. But Disaster Maelstrom does the exact same thing, doesn't have to hit, doesn't have to be the third attack, so I don't see the point in it. I think the best guy to sit on is Blue Storm Dragon Glory Maelstrom or Maelstrom Reverse. And here's my case. If you have a grade 3 in hand, why wouldn't you use it to stride instead of break riding? Do you not have enough cards in Soul to go into the new boss Maelstrom G-Unit? Is that the problem? But you'll have one additional... You, you have the cards already there. If you've been sitting on Lordly Maelstrom, then it... The only way... <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought here, but if you have... If you're sitting on the Break Ride, and you're not running Glory, and you're just running the Break Ride and Lordly, why would you drop that Lordly for a Break Ride instead of striding? It only blocks grade zeros, and Despina, the trigger, only blocks grade zeros. The only reason that it makes sense is that if you ran the Break Ride and Glory, so you could block out everything minus G Guards, but the Stride already does that, and it synergizes best with Lordly. I think Glory Maelstrom is the best to sit on because he does the grade 1 stopping. Reverse Maelstrom also works really well because it doesn't have to hit. You draw a card, gain 5, something like that. It's good. But Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom is a fine piece to use in here because you have Coralia the grade 1 which searches him out at the cost of discarding a grade 3. All our grade 3s are Maelstrom which then synergizes with being put in the soul by Lordly to boost up. Uh, for our big boss stride. I'm talking about all this before I've even shown any of the cards. <laughs> or even really talked about them. God, I need to get better at this. Ah, Blue Storm Dragon, Glory Maelstrom. Limit Break 5, Counterblast 1 when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may pay the cost to do until end of battle it gains 5k. Your opponent cannot call Grade 1 or Grade cards from hand to Guardian Circle. If you happen to have Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom in your soul, it gains 2k. That will work for this Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom, the Retrain, Break Ride, or the Rebooted Excel Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom. This Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom, though, Limit Break 4 when the unit attacks a Vanguard at the fourth battle of your turn or more until end of battle, the unit gains 5k, and Counterblast 1 when the unit attack hits, you may pay the cost you do, draw a card, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and retire it. Sorry for that tangent I went on, but just the crux of it is. 
I think running the brake ride makes absolutely no sense, because if you have a great three in hand, why wouldn't you stride instead of brake riding? Okay. Bubble Edge Draco Kid is the starter. A lot of people run Marios, and that works out great. You get to search out Maelstroms. I like Bubble Edge Draco Kid because you move them into the soul, you pick one of your units, and when it attacks, if it is a fourth turn or more, you get to, a fourth wave or more, you get to draw a card. And with units that we have in this deck, we can get back row attackers easily. So that's one. Vanguard's two. Another front row's three. And then something like Tidal Assault, which is what you're hopefully going to put this on, will four and five, netting you two cards off of moving Bubble Edge into the soul. Why I prefer to run him. Four heal triggers, and one of them are only refit sailor. Not because I think that's the way it should be, but because I just only have one refit sailor. It's that simple. If you're using my deck list somehow, wow, thank you, first of all. <laughs> uh, but two, just run refits. It's the one that makes sense. It's the counter charge or soul charge. When it's dropped for a G Guardian, choose it and another heal. Move them to the bind zone, counter charge or soul charge one. It's the best one to go with. And you don't need blue storms in your trigger lineup. Speaking of cards you really don't need in your trigger lineup, Despina. She doesn't make any sense in this deck. But, uh, she only makes sense if you're stuck on grade 3, and I don't even like to focus on when I'm stuck on grade 3. Blue Storm, Battleship, Wadatsumi is another critical trigger. Despina does block, uh, when she boosts your Vanguard with Maelstrom, if it is the 4th turn or more. She does block grade zeros from being called. She actually does have one use, is when you go into Wailing Salvas, because he blocks grade 1s, and she blocks grade zeros, so they're left really with G-guarding. That's what they're really left with. Grade 2s can also work, you know, if they got a ton of them in hand. Supersonic Sailor, moving into the Soul Counter Charge one. Supersonic is not that important in this deck, as it doesn't Counter Blast a ton. You will probably use all your Counter Blasts in the game, but you'll use them up one at a time. And with the correct batch of four Refit Sailors, you shouldn't be fine. But I do honestly recommend... Two and two. I just have another deck that is a open form, is an open classic Maelstrom deck. So I run my Supersonics and my Despinas in there, and that's where they're split between these two. Four stand triggers. The stand trigger isn't really for standing rear guards, but is for getting an extra attack because you do need to hit four attacks. That's Maelstrom's thing. Is when Maelstrom attacks as the fourth attack. Officer Cadet Alec Bors helps you do that because when he attacks at the end of the battle that he attacks, choose one of your other rearguards and move it into his place and then put him back in the deck. That's great. And these ones are all the trial deck foil ones. So that's nice. Four copies of Battle Siren Malika. God damn it, I keep hitting that. Margo clone, draw trigger. Very useful. Gets an extra card in the soul, which actually doesn't matter because you don't need Soul Blast. You need specifically Maelstroms in the soul. But sometimes you might need Soul Blast if you want to call your Blue Storm Shield Hominus. He can guard anything that is a Blue Storm. Oh no, he can guard anything so long as you have a Blue Storm Vanguard. So don't run non Blue Storms in a Maelstrom. Don't run non Blue Storms in a deck that you run Homerus. It's just that simple because he then he cannot perfect guard for anything. A wave third time or more, Soul Blast one at the end of the battle of this unit boosted. If you have a Vanguard with Blue Storm in its card name, you may pay the cost you do. Return it to your hand. It helps to get a booster out there, and for a Soul Blast of one, it'll bounce back to hand. Three copies of Kelpie Rider Nikki. Stride Fodder searches out Savas. Not important. We don't run Savas. Two copies of Battle Siren Stacia, GB1. She can attack from the back row, and when she does, she gains 3k. Useful for creating that fourth attack. Three copies of very underrated card, but because it's Maelstorm restricted, that's why. Blue Storm Battle Princess Theta. When you when she attacks, if you have Vanguard with Blue Storm, or no, Maelstrom specifically, she gains 2k. Becomes a 9k. But specifically, if it's the second time, exactly, wave second time only, when she attacks, she gains an additional 3k. So she becomes a 12k attacker. And that's all about the pokes. Aquaforce and their pokes. Maelstrom loves his pokes. Two copies of Blue Storm Battle Princess Coralia. This is the card that you choose a grade 3 from your hand and discard it. And search your deck for a specifically Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom. So I'm very excited to use this with premium Maelstroms because I'll probably bump her up to 3. 
maybe four, but I doubt that. The whole idea would be to ride, and honestly probably be go first, ride Maelstrom. Then uh, you can use her to discard. This would actually make it fine with going second. You know what, let me just get into my grade two so I can specifically show the unit and not just talk about units that I've not even shown yet. Four copies of Blue Storm Soldier Elder Moss. This boy is fantastic. This is a great card. This is exactly what Maelstrom needed when they were venturing into this new style of play. Mm -hmm Ish new style of play. But focusing on the soul. When this unit is placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, choose up one card from your hand and reveal it. If neither that card nor your Vanguard is a card with Maelstrom, it gains 5k. So it's one of those 10ks that you have to have the Maelstrom. Fine. Simple. You always want them on Rearguard and have the Vanguard with the Maelstrom, because you only run the eight grade threes that are Maelstroms. Once per turn, Cannonblast 1, choose a card with Maelstrom specifically from your drop zone and put it into your soul until on the turn this unit can attack from the back row and gain 4k. So this is what I'm talking about. Whether you're going first or second, let's just say you're going second, you ride the Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom with Excel. And then you don't even have to call this, you're probably going to call one of your three copies of Tidal Assaults when he attacks at the end of the battle, if you have an Aqua Force Vanguard, stand it, and it gains minus 5k. He does have to attack a Vanguard, and it's once per turn, and per the new once per turn rules, you don't have to attack. You don't have to restand him immediately. You get to choose. If you want to attack the Vanguard and then have him not restand, because then you're going to do Alexandros, well, that's fine too. Per the new rules, you got to wait for June in English with those. Back to this combo. You ride the Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom with Excel. Then you call Tidal Assault to that marker. Then you call Elder Moss in the back row. Then you'll call Coralia. Well, first you'll probably ride in stride. But you call Coralia grade 2 turn, grade 1 turn, probably grade 2 turn, and you'll pitch whatever Maelstrom you have in hand to go get that Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom. Next turn you'll ride it. Then you call Elder Moss after you've stridden, and you'll use his skill to make it so you can go 14k. But he also puts a Maelstorm into the soul without having to be on Lordly. And that can be very, very useful. Especially in Premium. When I'm thinking about it, that Elder Moss is, his role is already really important. But him and Coralia are going to be a tag team to watch out for in Premium Maelstroms. I don't even care if they're competitive or not, because I'm just going to have fun with them. One copy of Saber Flow Sailor. Great card, GB1, at the end of the battle that this unit attacks a Vanguard, if it's that fourth battle or more, you can retire it. Comboing her with the starter gets you to draw three cards, one when she attacks, two when you retire her. You do have to sack two cards, well you sack her and move your starter to the soul, so I still think the title slot combo just works better. Blue Storm Dragon, <laughs> Blue Storm Soldier Rascal Sweeper, this guy, just like that, is underrated, but that's because he's Maelstrom locked. Is a great card. When he attacks, if you have a Maelstrom, he's an 11k attacker. Always. Which is fantastic. He's always an 11k attacker. And at the end of the battle, this unit attacks a Vanguard. If you have a Vanguard with Maelstrom and its card name, you can choose a rearguard in the same column, which is the one behind him, and swap them. So, just really simple is attack with him, swap Attack with her. 11k, 12k. And that's all you need. Uh, in premium, you know, 11k might be a little less important. Depending on what deck you're going up against, it won't matter. But let's move on to the G zone. Five G Guardians, my personal favorite number. Let's talk about Ice Barrier Dragon. Wave one or four or more. So not two or three, but any other time. When it's placed on Guardian Servo, gains 10k shield. Wave uh, first or second, doesn't say wave, but essentially, first or second battle gains 5k shield. This one does say wave, two or three gains 5k shield, and Soul Blast one, turn this card face down, choose a card in your circle or in your damage zone, turn it face up. So it can counter charge for you, or it can unlock a card. And locked against Maelstrom is brutal. Then again, a lot of things against Maelstrom are brutal. If, you're, if, if your gimmick fails you, it fails you hard, with personally, with Maelstrom. That's what happens. If my gimmick fails me, it fails. One copy of Alexandros, because that's all I own. Two copies of Lambros, because he, he still does great. But 
typically I flip a Lambros with Alexandros. It's just not important anymore. First off, Lambros, though. When he attacks, you choose a face-down card named Marine General of Heavenly Silk. Lambros from your G-Zone, turn it face up. If it's the fourth battle of the turn or more, you may pay the cost. And if you do, choose up to two of your rear guards and stand them. Then if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, the units that are stood by this effect gain 10k. Alexandros, wave second or third time. Counterblast one, choose face down card from G zone, turn it face up. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose two of your rear guards and stand them, and they get 5k for each face up card in your G zone until end of turn. Useful, but not what the deck is about. Same thing with our three Sabuses. Useful, but not what the deck is about. Sometimes, if you have to change your entire strategy, then I like having Commander Sabas here and Wailing. Commander, once per turn, choose face down card named Storm Dominator, Commander Salvas from your G zone, and turn it face up. Choose up to one of your rear guards, and until in the turn it gains 5k and continuous, it can attack from the back row. And GB3, which rarely ever happens here. When your unit attacks a Vanguard, choose three of your opponent's rear guards, uh, wave fourth time only. Your opponent chooses one of the rear guard from the ones that you chose and retires it. Storm of Lament, Wailing Salvas. Really good card still. GB3, when he attacks for each battle that a rearguard attacked during this turn, your opponent chooses one of their rearguards and retires it. It gives Aqua Force a board wipe. If you can put enough, if you can get up to five rearguard attacks, which is totally doable, then you can have a board wipe. And his GB2, wave third time or more, counterblast one when this unit attacks you and pay the cost you do until in a battle it gains 5k for each battle that a rearguard attacked during this turn, and your opponent cannot call grade one cards from hand to guardian circle. Stopping. Older PGs, uh, not anymore with premium, <laughs> but we're still a little ways away, and we're still quite a ways away from everybody having those. But that's not what matters. Like I said, I am looking forward to this deck of premium, so I keep thinking about it. Two copies, that's all I think is needed, for Blue Storm, Medical Dragon, Disaster, Maelstrom. Uh, one real quick thing to note is I don't run any Admiral Maelstrom. I just do not think that card is... Good. It's just not good. It's an on hit. You got a counter blast and G Persona Blast on hit. I think it might be if the if it's the fourth attack of the battle and it hits, you choose three cards and your opponent retires one for each face up other copy of him you have in the G side. It's stupid. It's stupid. There's no need for it. Uh, choose a face down card named Blue Storm Helical Medical. <laughs> Medical Helical, what is it? Blue Storm Helical Dragon Disaster Maelstrom. I don't think I have ever read his full name. G Persona Blast. When this unit attacks, if you have a heart card with Maelstrom in its card name, you may pay the cost to do. Search for up to one card from your deck with Maelstrom in its card name, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck, and if you have a heart card with Maelstrom in its card name in your soul, choose up to three of your units in your front row and then gain 5k until end of turn. It's really easy to do to have a card in soul now, because if you have Lordly, you can pitch a Maelstrom to Stride, or you can pitch a Maelstrom from Coralia's effect, and you can use Lordly, or you can use uh, Elder Moss. Either way, having one in soul is so simple now, it used to not be. When this card came out, I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. But then GBT-13 happened, and we got Blue Storm Breaking Dragon Engulf Maelstrom. Just look at this artwork. He looks so good. Uh, I think, what is it? Maelstrom is a, like the size of a freight carrier or something like that. Or an aircraft carrier. He's massive. He's a massive dragon. And he's fantastic. This card... Let's talk about this skill. Once per turn, choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. Number of face up cards with Maelstrom in its card name in your G zone is two or more, gains 5k and a crit. You can always do that because you're hopefully first stride disaster, flip up disaster, then you go into him, flip up, <laughs> flip up a Savos, and there's two face up in your G zone. You gain 5k and a crit. And that 5k and a crit is very nice for his wave four. Only, your opponent cannot call cards from his or her hand to the G-Zone with grade less than the number of cards with Maelstrom in his card name in your soul during the battle that this unit attacked. The goal, in my opinion, and the way I play this deck, is not to win in one shot with this. It's to win in two shots. Because you go with Disaster, then you go into him, and you flip up, 
and you get the 5k and a crit. And by this point, you should have at least one, but preferably two to three. You want at least two. That's what you're really aiming for. And honestly, I think that's all you need to really be aiming for, is to have two, because that blocks out grade ones and grade zeros. Perfect guards and triggers. Or in premium, grade ones with 10k shield and perfect guards and triggers, but some people will still run the grade one perfect guards even after they get the grade zero, because it's all about deck building and choice, and that's really awesome. Damn, I'm actually excited about Premium now that I'm talking about this deck. Some I'm not excited about. Maelstrom has me really excited for Premium, and I think that's good. Just find the deck that you're really excited about in Standard, and find the deck that you're really excited about in Premium, and you will live a happy Vanguard life. <laughs> now here I am preaching about the praises of Vanguard. We are card fight crazy, and we like to talk about card fighting. And it's not just always Vanguard, you know, I do play Pokemon. Picked up DB Super recently. Back to Engulf Maelstrom, though. I am running around and not talking about him. You should have at least two in the soul, because then they can't use grade one or grade zeros. And if you climb up to three, that's cool. If you climb up to four, that's cool. The, the magical, magical number is five. If you can get five in, the game's probably gone on really long. You've used all your counterblasts, but then they cannot guard with literally anything. And you should kill them at that point. But preferably, it's to get two in the soul and swing with him and make them use their G-guards. And then next turn, you go into him again and have two in the soul at minimum and swing with him again and they don't have enough G-guards anymore. That's what you want to do. You want to waste their G-guards on him. And if you have to go to a third one, well, I hope you're playing a deck that you can survive long enough because Maelstrom has a hand-sized problem. If I were to make any recommendations, you can cut out the draw triggers or the stand triggers, not the draw triggers. You can cut out the stand triggers to run two more crits and two more draws, or three more draws and crits, or whatever, some combination of draws and crits. They're not all that essential. My thing is that he is still the fourth attack specifically, so getting a stand trigger after that is insane. With Excel, though, I might cut him out entirely because that extra circle could take care of the problem. It legitimately does. Then you have four front rows and you just make him last. Or you use one of your back rows first and leave your Excel circle, which gains plus 10k, later. Alright, I'm Joey. This is Cardfight Crazy. Hope you're crazy too.